that's a good point. Actually, uh, what we what we call is uh, the, is a, the MRI finding is a what we call semi-specific uh, finding for neurobehavior, and this is generally it involves the brainstem, and it's a large lesion uh, with ill-defined borders, which extends upwards to the basal ganglia and diencephalic region from the mainly midbrain, and also down to the pons and sometimes to the medulla. Uh, so it, it is not like what we see in multiple sclerosis, where we see more smaller uh, lesions with discrete borders, enhancing, and well, we see enhancement uh, also in neurobehavior in the acute phase, uh, but it is a very large lesion, so you wouldn't mistake, and it's, sometimes it can be tumefactive lesion, uh, and that will be mainly in the uh, midbrain diencephalic region. So when we see something around there, we start asking the patients whether they have the systemic symptoms of Bechet disease, like oral ulcerations, general ulcerations. Sometimes this may be mild and the patient may not seek medical uh, help for those. So uh, they do have the Bechet disease, but you make the diagnosis, uh, only they present with the severe form, the neurological form, uh, and find out that retrospectively they already had the systemic uh, symptoms and signs for some time. Uh, and then the other form, which is the cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, that is also quite interesting. We believe that the cerebral venous sinus thrombosis develops gradually in people with uh, Bechet disease, and therefore you are not expecting the fulminant uh, neurological manifestations such as seizures and acute uh, paresis or a very severe headache, uh, occurring at once, uh, it's a headache that occurs over the few weeks, months. Uh, the patient might have only a six nerve palsy. And interestingly, on the MRI, you won't see the hemorrhagic venous infarcts that you are expecting to see with venous sinus thrombosis of other causes. And interestingly, also in the CSF, you will see only increased pressure but not a cellular uh, reaction or anything else. Whereas in the parenchymal form, you have an inflammatory response. Many cells, an elevated protein, but no oligoclonal bands. Only in maybe 10 to 15% or less, you may see that. Well, uh, as I was mentioning, uh, the clinical presentation is heterogeneous, and so is the course. So there are some people who may have only a single episode of neurobehavior. There are some who may continue to have uh, recurrent episodes with some deficits remaining after the episode. And uh, whether there is a really true primary progressive form, I'm not very sure. In our clinical practice, we haven't seen this much. There are some people who uh, do have a progressive form, but this is more likely like recurrent episodes with further residua. Regarding treatment, uh, the first line treatment are immunosuppressants, and azathioprine is the first choice. Uh, however, there is no clinical trials in neurobehavior uh, for therapeutic trials, uh, and there are no proven uh, treatments uh, like cyclophosphamide, cyclosporin, methotrexate, all of this has been tried, but we have seen in lots of cases who develop neuro disease under these treatments that were given for uh, the systemic disease. And cyclosporin may also cause some neurological problems, CNS problems. Uh, 
Uh, recently, there had been a number of case reports, and we have uh, reported the largest series with uh, TNF alpha inhibitors, mainly infliximab, which may work in people who do not respond or who continue to have further neurological episodes. It helps to stabilize the disease, uh, and it seems to be the best options. And if you're not having a or you have having a progressive disease despite infliximab, tocilizumab now appears as a rescue treatment. However, these are all case uh, reports or just mentioned by experience. There are many new drugs, biologic drugs, that have been tried uh, without much success. And even when there is a success, because it's only one or two cases, you cannot predict, as I mentioned, you cannot predict whether the individual will remain with a single episode or it's having its recurrent episodes but will have further or not. So it, it's really not very easy uh, at the moment. And, and because there are, it is very uncommon, uh, you cannot really say much and there are not anyone who is really uh, volunteering to try or I mean the industry uh, to go in uh, neurobatch uh, clinical trials.